So hi everyone, my name is Middle, and today I'm going to tell you about an exciting new angle to the classical resource allocation problem. This is work done in collaboration with both systems and theory researchers from Columbia, Yale, and Cornell. Allocating a resource with a fixed capacity across multiple users is a fundamental problem. Depending on the context, this resource could be CPU, memory, network bandwidth, or anything else. There are three key desirable properties for any resource allocation mechanism. The first is Pareto efficiency, which says that resources should not be wasted when there is sufficient user demand. This ensures high utilization. Second is strategy proofness, which means that selfish users should not be able to gain benefits by lying about their demands. This ensures that users have no incentives to cheat. And finally, fairness, which says that resource, resource allocation should be balanced across users. Now, there are the two most popular algorithms for allocating a single resource are strict partitioning and maximum fairness. Strict partitioning divides the resources equally to users independent of their demands. So in this example, we have three users shown by three different colors who are sharing a resource with a capacity of six slices. Now, say their demands are three, two, and one respectively. Here, strict partitioning will allocate each of the users exactly their fair share of two slices. The obvious problem with this is resource underutilization. So here, for example, the yellow user is not using one of its slices, which could have been allocated to the blue user. Therefore, while strict partitioning satisfies strategy proofness and fairness, it violates Pareto efficiency. Maximum fairness alleviates the limitations of strict partitioning by taking user demands into account while allocating resources. So users first get the minimum of their demand and their fair share and the remaining resources can be used to satisfy any remaining demands. There's a classical result that shows that maximum fairness satisfies all three of the key desirable properties, but only under the strong assumption that user demands are static. However, in many real-world deployments, demands are far from static. Some specific examples of scenarios where demands change significantly over time are shared analytics clusters, in-memory key value caches being shared by multiple applications, and inter data center networks. To understand the extent to which demands vary in the real world, we did an analysis of production workload traces from Snowflake, a popular analytics service. These graphs show the CPU and memory demand of a randomly sampled user from the trace over a 15-minute time window. We see that demands for both the resources are varying significantly over time, with as much as two to three X change within tens of seconds. This is not just a one-off phenomena. When we did the analysis across all the users, we actually found that as many as 40 to 70% of the users have standard deviation in demands over time, more than half the mean, which indicates significant variation. Several prior works have shown that even in the other two scenarios, user demands can vary significantly over time. This demonstrates that dynamic demands are the common case in practice. Now, when thinking about dynamic demands, there's the question of how do we even apply maximum fairness? So one way to do this is simply apply it once based on the user demands at time t equal to zero. This is obviously uh, a terrible idea, and it's easy to show that it, doesn't, it satisfies neither strategy proofness nor Pareto efficiency. Here I'll focus on the more interesting case, which is what is typically used in practice today, which is when maximum fairness is applied periodically over time as user demands change. To see how this works, let's consider a running example that I'll be using throughout the talk. Say that we have the three users sharing six resource slices. The x-axis shows time, which is divided into fixed size, three fixed size units. And the y-axis y shows the demand of each user at any given point of time. Now say that the demands of the users are as follows at t equal to zero. Here, maximum fairness will allocate resources so as to satisfy all of the user's demands. Now at t equal to one, the demands change. Here we apply maximum fairness again. Now here, only the pink user has non-zero demand and there are sufficient resources to satisfy its demand. At t equal to two, the demands change again, and now everybody has high demands. Everybody has demands greater than or equal to their fair share of two. So here, maximum fairness obeys the key constraint that it always guarantees a user its fair share, and therefore allocates each of the users their fair share. 
that results in the final total allocations. Um, now, if, at first sight, it might look like there's no problem with this, but if you look more closely at the total allocation or the sum of resources allocated over time across the users, even though each of these users has the same average demand, there's significant disparity in the total allocations. In particular, the yellow user is receiving 2x lower total resources than the blue user. In the paper, we show that in general for n users, um, it's possible for a user to get as much as omega n factor higher allocation than the others. Therefore, maximum fairness applied periodically, while it is Pareto efficient and strategy proof, does not provide fairness under dynamic demands. And you know, overall, under dynamic demands, we see that maximum fairness loses one or more of its properties. This motivates the need to revisit the classical resource allocation problem under dynamic demands. This is exactly what we do in Karma. So one of the key reasons why maximum fairness is so, uh, is so popular is because of its simplicity. So we wanted to maintain this simplicity while designing Karma, and as a result, we came up with an extremely simple new resource allocation algorithm for dynamic demands. Despite this simplicity, we show, we prove uh, several powerful theoretical guarantees for this algorithm related to the three desirable properties and demonstrate that these guarantees translate well into practice through a prototype implementation and evaluation. Let's now dive into the Karma algorithm. So recall that with maximum fairness, there was the key constraint that it guarantees every user its fair share at any point of time. This constraint significantly limits the ability to balance resources across users over time. And to that end, Karma guarantees each user a fraction of its fair share. I'll talk more about this later, but for now let's assume that this fraction is half. Now the slices that are not guaranteed to any user uh, are called the shared slices, and th this is what, these are what are used uh, by the algorithm to balance resource allocation over time. Now at any given point of time, depending on the user demands, uh, users may or may not use their guaranteed shares. So in this example, the blue and pink users have a demand of zero, and they're not using the guaranteed slices. So to avoid wasting resources, they donate their slices. In this example, they donate one slice each. Uh, and on the other hand, the yellow user uh, has a demand greater than its guaranteed share and wants to borrow one extra slice. Now, this slice can be allocated from either the donated slices or the shared slices. Now, in general, uh, there can be, at any given point of time, there can be multiple borrowers and multiple donors, and Karma has to decide who to allocate resources to, you know, to which donor, which donated slices to use, which borrowers demands to allocate, and so on. To, to keep track of all of this, Karma introduces the notion of credits. And the intuition is very simple. The idea is that whenever users borrow slices, they lose credits, and they gain credits whenever they donate, donate slices which are used by other users. To bootstrap the system, each user is given a certain number of initial credits at time t equal to zero. So in this example, say that each of the users had four credits each, and if the donated slice from the pink user is allocated to the yellow user, then the yellow user will lose one credit and the pink user will gain one credit. Now intuitively, users who have received lower total allocations in the past would have donated more resources than they have borrowed. And as a result, we'll end up having a larger number of credits. So the, the key intuition behind Karma's algorithm is that it basically tries to balance credits across users while allocating resources as much as possible. This, was, this results in a very simple algorithm. So during each step, the algorithm first picks the borrower with the maximum credits, then picks the donor with the minimum credits. If there, is no donor, if there are no donors, then it picks a shared slice. It allocates the slice to the borrower and updates credits accordingly. This process is simply repeated until either all of the demands are satisfied or the resources are exhausted. By picking the borrower with the maximum credits and the donor with the minimum credits, Karma is essentially trying to balance the credits across users over time. So the algorithm is, is as simple as that. Let's now see how it works end to end with our running example. So at t equal to zero, um, the blue user wants to borrow three slices while no one is donating any slices. So we first pick the borrower with the maximum credits, which is just the blue user in this case, and allocate slices to it from the shared slices, right? And start decrement its, decrementing its credits. This process repeats until all of the shared slices are exhausted and the user's demands are satisfied. 
Now, at t equal to 1, the pink user wants to borrow two slices, while the blue and yellow users are donating one slice each. We again pick the borrower with the maximum credits, which is just the pink user. And now while picking the donor with the minimum credits, in this case, it's going to be the blue user. So we pick that. And we take a, the donated slice from the blue user and allocate it to the pink user. And the credits are updated, updated accordingly. Next, the yellow user becomes the one with the minimum credits. And its donated slice is allocated to the pink user. And the credits are updated. Now finally, at time t equal to 2, um, all of the users have high demand. Everybody wants to borrow resources. At this point, Karma picks the borrower with the maximum credits, which in this case is the yellow user, and starts allocating the shared slices to it. So as you can see, the yellow user is able to use the credits that it accumulated to get prioritized resource allocation. Now if we look at the final allocations and see the total allocations, we see that unlike with maximum fairness, Karma is able to provide equal total allocation across the users. So to complete the picture, remember, uh, recall in the beginning I told you that, um, and I've been assuming in the example that the guaranteed share is half of the fair share. In general, this ratio is a parameter for the algorithm, and it exposes a trade-off between long-term fairness and instantaneous fairness. So on the extreme, when the guaranteed share is equal to the fair share, um, you get instantaneous fairness. And as you start reducing the guaranteed share, you get better and better long-term fairness. More details are discussed in the paper. Let me now briefly cover uh, the theoretical guarantees that we prove. So I'm, I'm just going to give a high-level description. For full formal description and proofs, please see the paper. Similar to maximum fairness, karma is Pareto efficient. This follows immediately from the fact that it, it allocates resources until either the demands are satisfied or the resources are exhausted. So it's not possible for there to be any unused resources when there are demands. So, Let's now look at strategy proofness. It actually turns out that even though the algorithm is quite simple, analyzing strategy proofness for dynamic demands is very challenging. There are two cases, there are two ways in which a user can lie about their demand. The first is by over-reporting their demand. In this case, we show a powerful result that it is not possible for a user to gain any increase in their allocation with Karma. The other case is when users under-report their demand. Here we show a surprising new theoretical result that if the user had perfect knowledge of the demands of all other users, the future demands of all other users, then in theory, it can increase its allocation by a bounded constant factor. This is obviously very unrealistic in most, in most use cases. And in the more realistic case, we show that if a user has any imprecision in the knowledge of future demands of any user, it can lose, in, it, it can suffer a significant degradation in its allocation as much as a factor of omega n. Therefore, in practice, it does not make any sense for users to lie about their demands in karma. Let's now look at the fairness guarantee. Given, uh, given, past allocation, given fixed past allocations from time 0 to t minus 1, let's say that the, uh, the total allocations so far are, are as shown for each of the users. Now, intuitively, the user who has received the least total allocation so far is going to have the maximum number of credits like I had uh, hinted to earlier. And as a result, because Karma allocates, prioritizes allocation of resources to borrowers who have max more credits, it's going to try to increase the allocation of this worse off user as much as possible. Based on this intuition, we're able to prove that Karma maximizes the minimum total allocation from 0 to t minus 1, given fixed past allocations. Let me now quickly go through the uh, evaluation where we demonstrate that some of these guarantees translate well into practice. So we implemented Karma on top of uh, a distributed elastic memory system called Jiffy. And we evaluate the in-memory key value cache scenario, where multiple users are sharing a distributed in-memory cache. So we deploy Jiffy as a cache for data st stored in remote persistent storage. Um, now if data is present in the cache, then users can access it directly from Jiffy at low latency. Otherwise, the access has to go to remote storage, which is an order of magnitude slower. To generate dynamic user demands, we vary the working set size of each user using demands that we've taken from a production trace from Snowflake. This graph shows the CDF of the throughput across the users that we evaluated. 
So the x-axis shows the throughput obtained by a particular user, and the y-axis shows the, the fraction of users with throughput less than a given value. So this red line shows the distribution of throughput for maximum fairness. We see that it's actually a pretty wide distribution with a significant gap between the user with the minimum and maximum throughput. Karma's distribution is shown by the green line, and we can see that it's a significantly tighter distribution, and the gap between the minimum and maximum user reduces significantly. This graph here shows the average system-wide throughput across all of the users for both karma and maximum fairness. And we see that karma is able to get nearly the same, uh, or it's getting the same average system-wide performance as maximum fairness. This shows, this demonstrates that karma is able to significantly minimize disparity in performance across users while maintaining high average system-wide performance. For more detailed evaluation results, please look at the paper. So in summary, I've presented Karma, a new resource allocation algorithm for dynamic demands with strong theoretical guarantees that translate well into practice. With, with this project, we've you know, revisited a fund fundamental aspect of the classical resource allocation problem, and this opens up several, several interesting directions for future work. Uh, with that, uh, I'd conclude and be happy to take questions during the session.